Middle Tennessee's only primetime news. This is Fox 17 News at 9, your code red station. Good evening and welcome to a late edition of Fox 17 News. We begin tonight with a weather update as overnight frost could kill your plants if left uncovered. It's a little bit different here, getting pretty chilly. Fox 17 News meteorologist Brett Luna joining us in studio with more on the frost advisory that we are expecting. Yeah, Maggie, one of the first frosts of this season. So like you said, if you have any of those sensitive plants, yeah. better bring them inside because uh, you don't want them to die, you know, no, after all I... that hard work you've done to keep them alive. Yes. I know. So bring them inside. Be safe, even if it doesn't frost in your area. But, yeah, there are uh, frost alerts for tonight. We're going to see some of the coldest air of the season move in tonight, too. 39, your low temperature here overnight right here in Nashville. So it is going to be in the upper 30s right here. Other parts of Middle Tennessee, mid to upper 30s. So really cool for all of us anywhere you look. And, again, Frost will be a concern for parts of southern uh, southern Kentucky, also into parts of middle Tennessee. Low temperatures tonight again, mid to upper 30s for a lot of these spots. 34 in Lewisburg. We're going to be at 39 in Nashville, 35 the low temperature tonight for Dixon. And again, frost advisory is in effect for much of the area. So everybody in that shade of blue, that's the frost advisory, 1 a.m. to 9 a.m. on that. And we actually have a couple of our far southwestern counties in Kentucky in that freeze warning, and that's going to run a little bit later. That's going to run until 8 o'clock on those free, uh, freeze warnings. So the average first freeze date, just thought I'd show you this real quick too, Crossville. We typically see that around October 20th right here in Nashville. Typically see it around November 1st. And then for Middle Tennessee, on average, the last 10 days for most of those areas. Out the door tomorrow morning, if you're heading up or heading out to church early in the morning, we're going to see temperatures in the lower 40. So it's going to be a pretty chilly start for us. Clear skies, but rain is on the way. We're going to have a cold front move through later on this week and that's going to leave us with a chance for showers and thunderstorms. I'll have all those details coming up. Fall is in the air. Brett, thank you so much. In Operation Crime and Justice tonight, Hendersonville police alerting people of a criminal trend they are seeing. People picking up those in the homeless community and forcing them to cash fraudulent checks, leaving them with little to no help. Fox 17 News is Peyton Muse joining us in studio tonight with more. Peyton. Police say two people are involved in the scheme, Maggie, while one suspect is in jail on a nearly $150 bond. Police are still looking for the other. According to police, two people behind a check cashing scheme in Hendersonville used a homeless individual that is suffering from the after effects of a traumatic brain injury to cash fraud checks at a shopping center. Homeless advocates call this disgusting. Some say they're not surprised. Executive Director of Shower Up, an organization geared to help those experiencing homelessness, Paul Schmidt says he's heard stories of people taking advantage of those experiencing homelessness. And unfortunately, it does seem to be a pretty common tale. Involved in something like, like this, that's a whole next level kind of, for lack of a better word, Evil. Police say Marquise LaShawn Watford and Chelsea Lynn Walker transported the homeless person to Hendersonville with the promise of work and payment. Walker and Watford both had previous warrants for human trafficking and kidnapping. Walker was taken into custody for outstanding warrants and is behind bars in Sumner County. And Watford is believed to be at large in North Carolina. For Schmitz, he says kindness doesn't cost a thing and taking advantage of someone who's already having a hard enough time is disturbing and to utilize that for harm that's that's a pretty terrible thing to do that's um that's kind of the worst of the worst uh, these folks need our our friendship our support they need our care we need to be our brother's keeper in this regard other groups in nashville say they've seen this kind of exploitation before Police are asking anyone with information about this incident or similar ones to contact the Hendersonville Police Department. Reporting in studio, Peyton News, Fox 17 News, your Code Red station. Peyton, thank you so much. In a Fox 17 News crime alert, police identified the man killed in a hit and run this morning near Nolansville Pike. A witness says the 69-year-old Nashville man fell into the road for an unknown reason and was then struck by a speeding, dark-colored sedan that did not stop afterward. The man died at the scene. Police tracked the suspect vehicle from a trail left after the collision. Police found it abandoned at a nearby residence. 
This investigation is still ongoing and to track crime in your area, you can head to our website at fox17.com and click on alert nest. An update tonight as search and rescue efforts are expected to wrap up on a Florida beach brutally hit by Hurricane Ian last week. Fox News' Nate Foy is in Fort Myers with the very latest. Search and recovery missions continue on Fort Myers Beach just down the road behind me and members of the Florida Task Force 2 rescue team tell us that they have about 30 cadaver dogs scouring the island and they've picked up new scents as recently as Saturday. Take a look at this video again 30 dogs patrolling the island and they're using all the resources they have available that includes boats and drones. So a lot of the dogs are running up to the water. They get drones up in the air dogs and crew members on on the boats and then they go through the debris layer by layer. Take a look at how it works. Some of the HR dogs detected a scent and it ended right here at the water, but the dogs were trying to enter the water, which means that they may have a good strong scent that has uh, forced us to now move into marine operations, take boats along the, the shoreline over here, along with the dogs so that they can continue picking up that scent. And this rescue team has been hard at work. They have been on the island sleeping there at night since 10 p.m. last Wednesday. So they've been there for well over a week now. Unfortunately, they have found many bodies. However, they have helped people get off the island safely as well, including between 30 and 40 on Friday alone. Uh, we're seeing that a lot of people are realizing it's time to leave. As some leave the island, others are just returning to it for the first time. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis held an impromptu press conference on Saturday on Fort Myers Beach where he announced that. However, the task force tells Fox News some parts of the island are still blocked off as they look for more victims of Hurricane Ian. Reporting in Fort Myers, Nate Foy, Fox News. Another setback for Russia, the crucial supply route damaged by Ukrainian forces. And waiting for headstones, a Davidson County Cemetery responding to frustrations from families. And it's going to be a chilly night tonight for us. We have frost advisories in effect for basically all in Middle Tennessee. We're going to look at all that coming up after the break. Another setback for Russia's war in Ukraine as a massive explosion destroys part of a bridge connecting the Crimean Peninsula with Russia, damaging a crucial supply route for the Russian military. Fox News' Trey Yingst is in Kharkiv, Ukraine with the very latest. That's right, a massive explosion this morning destroyed the only bridge between Russia and Crimea. A blast and fire decimated the car and train sections of the bridge, sending large pieces of concrete plunging into the water below. The Russians say three people died after a truck exploded, adding that an official investigation is underway into the owner of the vehicle. Investigative actions are being carried out at his place of residence. The route of movement, vehicles and relevant documentation are being studied. Russia used this bridge as a main supply line to support their southern offensive in Kherson, and the destruction is viewed as a significant intelligence achievement for Ukraine. As the war rages on in the eastern part of Ukraine, Russian forces fired on Ukraine's second largest city of Kharkiv overnight. Ukrainian officials say the missile strikes damaged one of the city's medical centers in a non-residential building. Here in Kharkiv, we felt the blasts ourselves, the windows shaking as this city prepares for the possibility of more strikes tonight. In Kharkiv, Trey Yingst, Fox News. 14 months and still no headstone for their loved one. How a cemetery is responding to families frustrated. And an update on the deadly Las Vegas stabbing, how new developments have tied the event to a major crisis across America. And it is all dry right now, but rain is in the forecast. We're going to look at all that coming up.